this is going to be a mining stock education lecture, although I'm mostly going to be talking about the precious metals, the larger ones, royalty and streaming companies with a few case studies, but this also applies to the mining sector in general. And my thesis, and it is controversial and I'll lay out why, is that the larger precious metals, royalty and streaming companies, the ones with diversified cash flows, with portfolios, with assets generating cash flows, a good amount of them, not smaller ones like Mavericks Metals or smaller, or the other royalty and streaming companies that don't have little or any cash flow that have to dilute massively on every deal, that they actually benefit the more the paper price manipulation occurs. And I will lay out why. And yes, this is going to be controversial, but hopefully at the end of this lecture, you will understand exactly where I come from and it will make more sense to people. Okay, so as of right now, when we're doing this live stream show, gold is at $1,487.40 and silver is at $1,750. So it's at appropriate time because the gold price as of right now is, it has corrected since gold was above $1,500. It may go lower, it may go sideways, but as a long-term investor, myself a long-term investor in precious metals, the larger precious metals royalty and streaming companies like Sandstorm Gold, Weed and Precious Metals. It doesn't really matter that much about the short-term price actions of gold. In fact, I'll make the argument that it actually benefits them. So for those of you who are not familiar, who have not listened to any of my other lectures, and I have a, a good amount of them in the, as well as other sources with geology and interviews from Brent Cook and the Sprott resources about all the different uh, geological deposits and, and very interesting things like that. I have an entire playlist for mining stock education. I've also done um, lectures about risk versus reward, about all in sustaining costs. I routinely talk about maintenance capex. This is, maintenance capex is probably, I would say the most maintenance capital expenditure or maintenance capex, capex is probably the most important thing that most people who invest in mining stocks are not aware of. So, Mining is a very difficult, very dangerous, very capital excuse me, very capital intensive, very cyclical business. And the CEOs in the industry are normally not very good. What is very dangerous with miners is miners often for the last 15 years or so have heavily leveraged their balance sheets with debt. And this is dangerous because in a cyclical business, because a lot of the miners don't hedge their prices and hedging is not necessarily good because it allows the bullion banks to do more paper price manipulation because they're getting the metal and then they can do all these paper derivatives on top of the metal that they receive. But with a cyclical business, if you take on a lot of debt onto the company balance sheet, the revenues can fluctuate very, very violently. So there can be enormous amounts of volatility in revenues. So the commodity price can fluctuate violently and the debt doesn't change. So this could mean mining companies go from very profitable, enormous revenue growth, robust margins, generating enormous amounts of free cash flow to near bankruptcy within sometimes two years, three years or less. So that's how volatile mining can be. And the larger precious metals, royalty and streaming companies, and before I talk about, let, let me just, uh, before I talk about the precious metals, royalty and streaming companies, so mining companies always, the producing mining companies always need more capital. Whether that is for building a new mine and the odds are against the new mine coming in on time and on budget, you just hope that the cost overruns won't be too much and that the mining company did not borrow too much money and put themselves in a big hole or dilute too much. Mining companies also need massive amounts of capital to either upgrade producing mines to either maintain or improve margins, or they need capital to repair their balance sheets because like I've said, for the last 15 years or so, a lot of miners have drastically over leveraged their balance sheets. And precious metal royalty and streaming companies, so royalty companies are not new, but gold stream contracts are fairly new. Nolan Watson was doing the first gold stream contracts. He actually invented the silver streaming contract when he was the first employee at Silver Wheaton. And then he left to start Sandstorm Gold. And he did gold streaming contracts at first with 
small little junior gold miners and it was considered very risky and then the larger royalty and streaming companies like franco nevada uh, at that time it was silver wheaton started doing gold stream deals um royal gold they did not have a lot of growth in their portfolio so they had very little uh growth in their portfolio they had a lot of royalties generating cash flow they had good diversification but they did not have growth and so once they started adding streaming to their portfolios deals then their growth exploded their revenues exploded their their margins the the royalty and streaming business is always going to be a lot higher margin business franco nevada and royal gold have some of the highest revenues per employee of any business in any sector not just mining not just commodities any business in any sector they have the high they have super high gross margins this is a very high very high margin, very high free cash flow business in general, as long as the management team does not over leverage the balance sheet, expose the shareholders to counterparty risk, or um, deviate from the royalty and streaming business model, which is what Osisco Gold Royalty has done lately, is they've exposed their shareholders to a lot more risks of mining risk and maintenance capex risk because they're now trying to build their own gold mine. And that's not a royalty and streaming company business model. The royalty and streaming company business model protects that. And the other ways are that the royalty and streaming business model can get in trouble besides over leveraging the balance sheet is doing a lot of bad deals. So in the past, Osisco Gold Royalty bought a package from Orion Mine Finance. They overpaid for grossly overpaid for it. They paid over a billion dollars for it. The Sandstorm Gold management team had it valued at under $500 million. I believe it was closer to $300 million because they expected that Pretium, uh, Pretium Gold Mining would buy back the entire Bruce Jack Gold Stream, and that was supposed to be the crown jewel of the package. So the ways to protect yourself as a royalty and streaming company if you're running the company is to not allow these massive buyback clauses. So you may, um, you don't want to take too much of the revenues of the project economics of the mine. So if you take too much of the gold stream or silver stream, you could potentially destroy the project economics of the mine. And then the royalty, then in the streaming contract has to be amended later to help the miner fix the economics of the mine or prevent the miner from going bankrupt. And Sandstorm Gold has done had to done a few of these, but in exchange, the shareholders got additional royalties on other mines that are gonna be built. So Sandstorm Gold had to amend a couple um, streams in the past. The first one was on the Luna Gold mine, which, which Equinox Gold just brought back into production. That changed from a large gold stream into a sliding scale royalty. So Sandstorm Gold is still gonna do very well on that sliding scale royalty. And then the other one was, it was with Mennor Resources and now they got merged with Bonterra Resources and that's on the Moray Bachelor Mine. So that went from a 20% gold stream, I believe, and it, it's switching, I think, to a royalty. I have their website up explaining this. So I think it stays at a stream for a little bit and then it drops down to a royalty in a little bit. And that's to help with the project economics at the mine. Sandstorm Gold's already made a profit on that gold stream, but if the stream streaming contract, the economics of it are not structured properly, the stream can do more harm than good. So now let's go to the royalty and streaming companies. The miners, like I said, almost always need capital. And right now, for one reason or another, producing gold miners, producing copper miners, producing silver miners, most of them now occasionally you have a well-run miner but most of the industry because there's been bad management because there's been a lack of really high grade low qual low qual uh, excuse me high grade low cost mines brought online for a while now there's just a, a lack of them there's not as many as there used to be that the royalty and streaming companies just take advantage of them so anytime the metals prices fall it's an opportunity for a company like Franco Nevada, which already has a hundred royalties and streams online generating cash flow, to go out and add more to their portfolio. So whereas if the gold and silver price stays flat, uh, either goes sideways, stays flat, or it, there's chop sideways for a while up and down in a range, or the gold and silver prices go down and the producing miners are worried. They're desperate about their margins. They're worried about their balance sheet. They're worried about bankruptcy. They're worried like Yamana Gold that they can't afford the maintenance capex for their best producing mine, which was Chapada, which I've talked about it at length in the past. So 
the mining companies, when metals prices fall, they're worried about their margins, they're worried about staying in business. That's not the same worry that the, pre the larger precious metals royalty and streaming companies have. The precious metals royalty and streaming companies, they can be contrarian. They can be counter cyclical. They can make investments in growth. So whereas regular producing miners are worried about surviving in times of sideways metals, margins being contracted, metals prices falling, the royalty and streaming companies, once the business model is large enough, once they have a diversified portfolio of cash flows large enough and management team hasn't screwed up the balance sheet with leverage or deviated drastically from the business model, they're looking to do more and more deals for very quality future long-term cash flows. And this is why Franco Nevada, despite the gold price for years, not doing a lot. This is why Franco Nevada shares are up so much. So Franco Nevada, since it re-IPO'd in 2007, it's had over 11 years straight of dividend increases. So they've rewarded shareholders that way. I was an investment analyst at Investing Daily in 2013. That was my day job. And I was even when gold price was falling, I thought it would correct, but I was wrong on the gold price back then. And it went a lot lower than I thought it would. But Frank, I, rem I recommended for people, this was my day job. I was an investment analyst. And I recommended for people to buy Franco Nevada shares at $40 per share. Well, the gold price went down a lot. Franco Nevada took advantage of their diversified cash flow portfolio and they took advantage of the problems in the mining industry and they just did more quality long-term deals for, for growth and future cash flows. And guess what? Franco Nevada, Franco Nevada shares, which is FNV, Frank Neal, Virginia, those shares went from about $40 per share and today, six years later, they're up to $93.44 per share. So more than doubled your money. This is how the business model works when it is done correctly. And along the way, not only has your capital that was invested six years ago more than doubled, if you bought and hold, you have also been rewarded with six straight years of dividend increases. And Franco Nevada has, this is how quality of a company Franco Nevada is. Franco Nevada has now outperformed Berkshire Hathaway in the last decade. This is a gold company. Normally, gold companies are viewed as cyclical, so value investors hate them because they cannot project the cash flows. But Franco Nevada, in spite of the gold price, not doing a whole bunch in the last six or seven years. In fact, most of those years, it went down. Franco Nevada's revenues went up because they did more smart deals for more cash flow. And Franco Nevada is a lot safer than Sandstorm Gold, but Sandstorm Gold has the potential with its growth pipeline and its CEO, if its CEO continues to do smart, solid deals, and adding quality long-term cash flow deals, this has the potential to become a company like Franco Nevada. That's why I like Sandstorm Gold so much. Because the CEO is an innovator. He created these contracts. He's been doing this for a decade. So the royalty and streaming business model benefits from the paper price manipulation. Let's say the manipulators keep prices capped for six months, 12 months. I may be wrong on my gold call at 1600. Gold may go down lower. But as a long-term investor in these royalty and streaming companies, me making my gold price predictions doesn't matter. Why? Because the companies that have, um, as long as Weed and Precious Metals has a little bit too much leverage on their balance sheet, they need to pay some of it back. Royal Gold, I just saw, had paid back another $150 million on their balance sheet, so they're taking the leverage down. But once these companies pay back more debt, they just looking, they're looking for more deals for growth. So the, my point is, while these primary gold and silver miners are trying to keep their head above water or just barely survive, you know, stay flat, tread water, these royalty and streaming companies are looking for even more growth, more, adding more and more long-term quality, long-term cash flows to a diversified and already growing diversified portfolio of cash flows. And this is why the business model works. So when people say, oh, you don't care about the gold price manipulation, it doesn't matter to me. They'll just do more deals. So the more they manipulate this down, the more it benefits companies like Franco Nevada the more it benefits companies like Royal Gold in the long run, the more it benefits Weed and Precious Metals, the more it benefits Sandstorm Gold. Yeah, Fr Franco, Franco has been, Franco's business model was voted one of the top business models in the entire business industry. 
They have one of the highest revenue, Franco Nevada and Royal Gold have some of the highest revenues per employee of any company in any industry. They've won awards for most. No, I'm not on the Sandstrom Gold payroll. And, I, and I'm actually using Franco Nevada as a case study because Franco Nevada has over 100 diversified royalties and streams generating cash flow. Oh, thank you for the super chat, Anthony. I appreciate it. So as long as the management team of a larger precious metal royalty and streaming company doesn't put buyback clauses into the stream so the cash flow gets taken away for too cheap or they don't destroy the project economics at the mine where they take too much of the revenues of the mine with a royalty with a stream or they do a lot of bad deals, or they over leverage their balance sheet, or they deviate from the business model, the business model works very, very well. So the more paper price manipulation there is, the more it benefits the larger royalty and streaming companies, in my opinion. So I would expect then Franco Nevada, Royal Gold, Wheaton Precious Metals probably has to pay back more debt, but they may do another deal in the next six months and Sandstorm Gold. You're going to see them continue to do more deals. And you're going to see the Seeking Alpha article writers say that, you know, these companies are, are not smart and all this other stuff. Meanwhile, the companies are just going to add more and more cash flow. And they're going to get more and more diversified with more cash flow. And that's why I like the business model long term. Because now, in my opinion... It actually benefits from the paper price manipulation because the business model is designed to, to take advantage of the mining companies because the mining companies cannot raise capital when metals prices are low. Actually, even at current metals prices that we're at now, and we've had a pretty big rally since April and May of 2019, the a lot of the mining companies cannot raise a lot of capital right now either. So when there's, and they, then the larger precious metals royalty and streaming companies just adapt the business model. So when Metals prices go a lot higher. They will do more deals to build to help build new mines. But right now, the most opportunities are helping repair the balance sheets of producing copper miners and maybe taking a gold stream from a copper or base metal miner, taking a gold stream to help the mining company repair their balance sheet. Yeah, I don't I don't know about the quality of the streams, guys. I'll take a look. I'll listen to it uh, this broadcast later. I have no idea what's happening. This, the software says it's running fine. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. So there, there are risks to royalty and streaming companies. There are contracts that can go bad. Deals can be amended. But in general, if the company has a diversified portfolio of cash flow... One or two deals going bad doesn't destroy the company, and then the company just does more deals and adapts. Unlike a mining company, which often has to bet the whole company on one or two mines. So I would look over the next six months, if metals prices don't rise, you're going to see more deals announced for more quality long-term cash flows from those companies I mentioned. Uh, I have no idea. I think I think Sandstorm Gold is running ads. I think they run Kidco ads. They said they've been adding to their email list. Okay, well, I was just going to keep this royal this uh short live stream show this lecture short, but the royalty and streaming companies, especially the larger ones are not exposed to the maintenance capex risks. The biggest risk, there are a lot of risks running a mining company and building a mine and maintaining a mine. There's hundreds of problems that can occur at the mine. And with the government, if it's in another country, if the government gets greedy and tries to increase the taxes. But the royalty and streaming companies are not exposed to these risks, especially the maintenance capex risks. Because a new mine can, the cost overruns on it can be enormous. 
Okay, I want to thank everyone for listening. Um, if the stream did skip, you should go back and re-listen. I think there's a lot of important points here. So the larger precious metal royalty and streaming companies, these are not your, your Metallas or your Eli resources. Those companies are too small, and they have to dilute on every single deal, and they have little or no cash flow. So they have to do massive dilution to do any kind of significant deals. Even Mavericks Metals, which has around 25,000 gold equivalent ounces per year, they probably still have to dilute significantly to do a, a large deal at this point. Now, there will be opportunities for them, but they will have to do dilution because they're not at the stage where they have enough diversified cash flow where they don't have to dilute. Okay, so I think I covered everything enough for now. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you to my almost 180 Patreon account contributors and my dozen monthly PayPal contributors and the people throw me tip once in a while. It's much appreciated. You're allowing me to grow my small business and have less stress in my life. And I'll see everyone tomorrow with new content. Can't talk about baseball because then I'll get a one-page email. <laughs> then I'll get a one-page email from someone saying my podcast is too important to talk about baseball. So I'm just going to go watch the World Series and relax, and I will work on new content for tomorrow.